Welcome to Software Engineering Daily. Today we are republishing a past interview I conducted with Osine and Anesi Inkian Osime, a pair of teenage software engineers from Nigeria who developed a mobile browser called Crocodile Browser. This is one of my favorite interviews ever, and I think you will enjoy it. It's a great illustration of how wide the scope of software engineering is and why Software Engineering Daily wants to continue to cover a broad swath of topics. Thanks for listening, and if you enjoy the episode, please give me some sort of feedback and let me know what you'd like to hear more of. I'm software underscore daily on Twitter, and you can also message me on Gmail, softwareengineeringdaily at gmail.com. Thanks. Okay. Anesi and Osine, Ikiano Sime, welcome to welcome to Wooden Computer. Uh, It's really great to have you guys. Thank you. So, uh, so congratulations on an awesome product, which is Crocodile Browser. I downloaded it, and it's really fast. So, you built Crocodile Browser because you needed a faster browsing experience for uh, mostly for feature phones. Is that correct? Yes. So so how did you how did you build it? Like how do you build a browser with that with that uh that product use case in mind? Well, you have to make the browser very small and take a little space on the memory. Not like Google Chrome that takes about seventy gig on seventy megabytes on your memory. So you have to make everything small, light and compact just for speed. And are there any particular tricks that you used? I mean, because so so this was all all built in Android, correct? Yes. Were there? Uh, I mean, you said there's a there's a rendering engine that allows you to load pages particularly quickly in slow connections. How does that work? We use a very light JavaScript engine that processes pages fast and easily. That what allows you to load pages fast. So, so where did you did you build the engine yourself? No, we worked on an already existing engine. Okay, what was the name of that? It was the default Google WebKit engine from Google. Okay, um, do, do you know of any ways? Like, what are the the specific ways that this browser is differentiated from Google Chrome? For one, people see it's faster. I'm not going to see it's faster. So, design is completely different. It builds for simplicity, so anyone can use it. And that's about it for now. Okay, is there, is there like a product roadmap for it? Yes, there is. What sorts of features are you planning? Uh, we can't really disclose that right now, but... Okay, okay, that's fine. What is your workflow like as a team? Like, how do you... Uh, Osine, how do, how do you and your brother... Or, or uh, honestly, whoever, whoever wants to answer this, how do you work together? Well, I work on like most of the design features. I think of most of the features. Osine does most of the coding and the work because he has more time for that. Okay, and do you do you do wireframes or uh, do you do whiteboarding? What's what sorts of extra? Uh, we do wireframes, whiteboarding, all of that. Okay, that's great. Um, do you? Do you ever have disagreements about what sorts of uh, improvements you should make? Not really. Interesting. Uh, have you guys ever had disagreements, or have you always been uh, been pretty close and, and pretty aligned in what you have, the ways that you think? We've had some disagreements about some things. Like, he didn't want to take the browser out. He wanted it to stay and close with us, just for us to use it alone. I didn't want the browser to be a commercialized product. I just wanted it to be like a family product for us to use. I didn't want it to. I didn't want to push it out on the Google Play Store, but Sina insisted. So why didn't you want it on the store? I didn't think it was uh, good enough. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's uh, there's kind of a mantra in the startup community that uh, once you're comfortable shipping a product, it's probably uh, been longer than you should have waited. Like you should probably ship before you're comfortable with it. But I mean, that's just conventional uh, wisdom, I think. Yeah. But you could you could say either way. I mean, I guess that's not the Apple philosophy, right? The Apple philosophy is wait until it's perfect. Steve Jobs. Yeah, that's the Apple philosophy by Steve Jobs. 
Yeah, so uh, who builds the best products? Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, or Elon Musk? I would say Elon Musk. He's, my, he's kind of my idol. I agree with Sosine. It's Elon Musk. And that's because he builds uh, stuff. He builds. Okay. He's trying to get up. He's trying to uh, rid the world, world of its fossil, fossil fuel uh, addiction with Tesla. And he's trying to explore the next frontier, space, SpaceX. Yes. Um, what other? Who are some other role models that you guys have? We have Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Nick Delosio, and Sergey Brin and Larry Page. What's inspirational to you about these people? They never give up. They keep trying and trying and trying until they get it right. Do you see that as valuable in your own journey to? Uh, becoming successful product engineers? Yes, we do. What are some times where you've had to persist past difficulty? When I was building the first version of the browser, I didn't know anything about JavaScript engines, rendering engines. I didn't know anything about clouds or anything. I had to read a lot to gain the information I needed to build the engine to run the browser. Okay, uh, that was Osine, right? Yeah. Uh, honestly, what about you? What are some times where you've had to persist past difficulties? Persist past difficulties? Uh, maybe it was when we started off at first. At first, I, I personally didn't, didn't think the product was going to work. I just said, okay, let's start this. Let's start this thing. And uh, no matter how long it's going to take, we're going to complete this project. And we gave ourselves like one year to complete it. We actually completed it in three months, I think. Yeah. In three months, it um, it was yeah. I was amazed at what we could do in such a short period of time. Do either of you have a preference for back end or front end development? Not really. Not uh, really. I prefer front end. Okay. Do you think that uh, it's impossible to be a good front-end engineer without being a good designer? I don't think so. And that's because I think I'm a terrible designer and I'm decent when it comes to like, doing... All, I'm decent with markup languages, XML, HTML, and the others. Do you think in the future there's going to be no difference between engineering and design? Like, they'll be the same thing? Yes, I do. What, what factors do you think drive that? Because design and engineering are becoming closer and closer with better technologies built every day. So in the next 10 years, i say design and engineering should be about the same thing. What are some of your favorite technologies that allow engineers to act like designers or allow designers to act like engineers? Uh, I, think, I think SketchUp. And Maya. I personally really like Maya and I use a lot. What is Maya? Maya but Maya is an animation and rendering application you can use to build stuff, to build to model um to model real life things and animate them. It's like a modeling software. Tell me about Project Croc Chat. Project Croc Chat. That's an assist project. Uh, Croc Chat is a project we started last year, and it's uh, a, and it's a Croc Chat is uh, it's a way of trying to re- reimagine the communication, the messaging app we have right now. I can't really talk too much about that, but it's um, we're trying to reimagine communication with Croc Chats. In what ways are you are you um, are you reimagining? Like, do you think? Uh... So, like, what do you think of what do you think of uh, the the different messaging platforms right now? For example, like you have you have Facebook Messenger, you have WhatsApp, you have Line. There's all these Messenger. Uh, so you have Slack, and they all have different interesting feature sets. Like, what what do you think are are some interesting differences between them? Uh, I personally like Facebook Messenger because of all the different apps, of, of the, all the different apps you could use with uh, the core Messenger app, like. I, I, I use the Giphy app a lot, and uh, it's really... Which app is that? Giphy. Do you guys use stickers? Yeah, I do. 
I use stickers a lot. Did you know that stickers are the business model for, I think, Line or maybe some some other messaging app? Uh, yeah, like Vivo. Vivo uses stickers as like a business model. They they sell stickers, and I don't I don't really think that's sustainable. I think that they should try and uh, try and merge try and merge another service with Vivo and uh, like e-commerce games. That way they can. That way, uh, it's easier to make money. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it would be a long-term business model, though, because I mean, uh, you know, art. You know, people buy art to put on their walls. It's kind of like that. You know, if you if you have a really good artist that makes a really good sticker, it that's not so different than having a good artist put something up in a gallery and sell it. Uh, yeah, it's not so different, but I, I, I think the sticker model is like, it's still in its infancy. It's, we haven't really seen, it hasn't reached, it's, it's not mature yet, so we, we can't really see. What do you think is the future with all these messaging apps? Because I think it's, it's interesting because there's been such a fragmentation uh, like I remember, I don't know, a, a couple of years ago, it was basically, it felt like it was just WhatsApp and Hangouts, I guess, and maybe some other ones, but I, for me at least, it was just Hangouts and WhatsApp, and now it seems like there's a million of these things. Um, is that your experience also, or did has it, have you guys had messenger fragmentation for a while? Uh, actually, st- that, that started recently. That started recently. Uh... A few weeks back, I started using Vibo, Messenger, and um, WhatsApp, and Snapchat too, because uh, each each Messenger app is targeted at a, diff- at a different audience. And if you want to like reach your friends on e- on each of those platforms, you have to join all of them. Yeah, what is the what is the different segmentation there? Like, um, you know, like what is who does Snapchat target that? Uh, that Facebook Messenger does not target. Uh, Snapchat is more of like it's in also delish um messages that dis- automatically disappear, right? And some people say that's, that's quite interesting. And I think I read an article a few days back of about even the founder, the founder of Snapchat. He said that Snapchat targets thirteen to thirty five year olds. And Snapchat, the target audience of Snapchat is more of like, uh, it's like the target audience of maybe a media company like MTV. And Facebook Messenger is really for anyone on Facebook, but not everyone is on Facebook, so. That's interesting. I hadn't heard the MTV analogy. That's, that seems accurate. So tell me what it's like to be a young software developer in Nigeria. It's really weird because... Last year, last year I went for a Google event and were all looking down on me until I introduced my product. Then they were now looking at me as if I actually knew what I was doing. But before I introduced my product, they were all looking down at me. Most of the guys there were about 35 to 40. I've seen all, according to myself, old men and women there. I was the youngest person there. Do you think there's discrimination against younger people? Yes, I do. Do you think it's justified? No, I do not think it's justified. What about the argument that older people are more experienced? I think it doesn't have much to do with experience when it comes to software. Because a young person would think of about a million different ways to do something. While an older person might think of about just 500,000. So a young person has more ideas and more ways he thinks that thing can work. So an older person can just be there to guide the younger person rather than taking over the product. In my opinion, experience matters. Uh, experience matters only when the product is trying to like, only when the product is trying to grow, only when it's reaching its growth stage. Like the, the original product doesn't have to be mature like it, it can be created by any young person because young people are the ones that have the ideas um, the older ones that have the experience 
are like those are going to be the mentors to help to push the product along, to make it grow, to scale, uh, to get the product to scale up. Do you think that lack of ex- lack of experience can be an asset? Yes, it makes you ignorant and makes you like me push anything out where the product is stupid, disgustingly designed, ugly, half baked. Yeah. It, it, just, it just it just gives you more confidence. It just you just push anything out. You don't understand that. It, we mean well when you have experience. You are oh no, this is impossible with this. Like. I can remember there was a statement uh, Larry Pitt in his speech at the University of Mich- Michigan. He said that when he had first got the idea for Google, he thought it would take him only three weeks. And he told his advisor, Terry Winograd, and he said that, okay, and, and uh, Terry Winograd said that, okay, yes, it would take you three weeks, knowing full well that it wouldn't take him that long, but wise enough not to tell him. If you're just a beginner, you're ignorant enough to say, okay, I can finish this product in a week. But if it's, and it takes you longer, you just push, keep on, keep at it. You don't give up. You just keep trying. And that's also an example of an, of an experienced person acting in a very sophisticated way that was in the best interest of the younger person. Because he could have, you know, Terry Winograd could have said, this is going to take you a lot longer, but instead he said, no, go ahead and do it. Like, this is good, and it, and it was very successful for him. Tell me about life in Nigeria. Okay, life in Nigeria is nice. Like, imagine if you were explaining life in Nigeria to uh, an alien who had never visited Earth before, because that's essentially, I mean, <laughs> I have no idea what it's like to live in Nigeria. Nigeria is a nice place to live in, but it has some power supply problems and basic infrastructure problems. It will be to the better power supply in Nigeria will be one of the best countries in the world. How long do you think it'll take to get to that place with the better power supply? I have no idea. <laughs> you think uh, you think Powerwall is the is Powerwall going to be a solution? Uh, probably yes. Or if you could get one of Elon Musk's batteries. That's power wall. Yeah, no. That's power wall. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I think he's building, like, I think he, he has pretty big plans. Like, he wants to build a whole network of, of, uh, of stuff that, uh, that can be deployed. Uh, I don't really know the model behind it, behind how it distributes uh, energy or and stores stuff, but uh, I imagine he, you know, he's... You know, he's got plans he could deploy that would certainly help power infrastructure in Nigeria. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. So what are the what are the problems that stem from having a weak power infrastructure? Does that does that restrict some of the things that uh people are able to do that are uh that are that we take for granted in, in America, for example? Oh yeah, sometimes I can't work all night because of, uh, well, there's no power, the laptop battery died. Uh, I think that's about it. Yet, I don't have, my laptop isn't always on to use. I can't use it all the time because of weak power supply. Sometimes the, wi- the Wi-Fi battery dies and, well, there's nothing we can do about that. And, oh yeah, there's something I've never forgot to talk about. We also have terrible, like, a poor internet connection. Internet is very, very slow. How's the Wi-Fi coverage? Uh, I think it's 4G. I don't, it's getting better. But it's still quite slow. In some pla- it's better in some places than others. Do most Nigerians have smartphones? Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. But I think... Up to 50% of Nine, the Nigerian populations have smartphones. Do you know of anybody that, who uses internet.org? No. Why don't people use it? I think it has to do with awareness. Most people aren't aware of it. Have you ever tried to use it? Yeah. What was your experience like? I found it funny because I actually like the product. Because it's brought down data consumption and... It made browsing the internet simpler and easier. Do do many of your friends know how to code? No. Why why don't they learn to code? They're not interested at all. They think it's boring. They think it's time consuming, and 
most of them just aren't interested. Some of them are trying to learn now, but no, no, none of them have really started. They're just asking me questions. See, it's so weird to me that people choose not to learn to code, because to me it seems like s such a fundamental skill. It's almost like learning, it's like learning to read or write. Yeah, I think it's like, well, I don't, I don't see, it. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's that fun fundamental right now because there are still many people around the world who, who can't read and write. So I think that problem should be tackled first before before we try to make code coding like a basic human like uh um. So we have four try to make coding a basic education skill. So do you think that in you know maybe in in five or ten years it'll be much more fundamental or do you, I guess I guess you're saying in five to ten years we still would need to be focused on reading just reading and writing if the problem is tackled accordingly we shouldn't be focused on that at that particular time frame so what do you think the world will look like in 10 or 20 years uh, I think the world would be I think everything will be interconnected with the uh, I think the internet of things would like that industry will have reached its peak and we'll start talking about more things we also meet like drones and uh, drones, robots, they'll be more mainstream. Even here in Africa, like I expect drones to be here in Africa in the next 10 years, hopefully. What are the most important applications you see for drones? I think it should be uh, for delivery. Like I think Amazon is trying to do something like deliver in 30 minutes, like to make delivery delivery of uh, goods very fast. It's basically uh, transport logistics. So I think another thing that's interesting is once you have drones flying around overhead, they they also serve as hotspots essentially. So you can do things like mesh networks among the drones. Yeah, that's a possibility. That's a possibility in uh, that's a possibility in like in like cities, but uh, in places in the rural areas, I think the Google's balloon project, Project Fire, I think, is going to be more uh, it's going to be more applicable there. Are Facebook and Google going to have a competition for delivering internet service, or do you think that they're going to be in different market segments because my understanding is facebook's plan is is like drones right like they'll, they'll have low-flying drones that provide wi-fi and then google's plan is the balloons right yeah well i think facebook and google somehow manage to compete against each other all the time so yeah i think they're going to uh be competing against each other for drones and everything else eventually I don't know if you guys have read Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One. No, not yet. It's pretty interesting. One of the things that he talks about a lot is that competition is overrated, especially when you have a wide open marketplace with lots of opportunities. And like after reading it, I started thinking of, in terms more of how companies can stay out of each other's way, maybe, and go for more well-defined market segments uh, without stepping on each other's toes. Do you think that competition is overrated? Yeah. No, not really. I think competition is what, uh, is what gave to the rise of Facebook and Google in the first place. Right now, if, if uh, Yahoo, Yahoo and all the other search engines back then in the 90s were not competing, there would have been no need for Google. Because maybe if Yahoo was like the best, the best, uh, the best search engine at the time, there would be no uh, the consumers would have gotten a better product. Competition is 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 best for the consumers, but it's not so good for uh, firms, the companies. But if you think about how Yahoo has done post Google, Yahoo shifted its strategy to to media. Well, I think they I think one thing they did was they cop they tried to copy Google and they said, "Okay, now search is super important to us." Rather than trying to you know, go for something completely unique. So when so when Yahoo really tried to compete with Google, 
and went from a portal to a search engine, it was actually, I mean, it sort of was their downfall. And now they're sort of like a shell company for Alibaba or whatever you want to call them. Um, but they, it certainly doesn't seem like a company that's centered around any specific product. And it almost seems like they got there because they were trying to compete, to me. In my opinion, competition is good when like the industry is just starting off. But after a while, for a company like Yahoo, and like, I don't think Excite.com exists anymore, and all the other search engines that existed back, back then. When there's a clear market leader, I think it's better to try and create, try and create your own niche market, try and diversify, try and move... Try and uh, try to move on to something else. Really. Tell me about your day, um, like in like your day to day life. Uh, tell me about like how how your morning goes, and then what do you do at school, and just tell me about like, and when do you program? I want to hear about what life is like for you. Maybe first Osine can tell me, then um, and then An- Anessi can can tell me. Well, my day to day life. I wake up, I go to school, then we do five subjects a day, three in the morning and two in the afternoon. Then after that we have lunch, they have something like an elective after lunch. We even have sports, sports vocational, assembly, pastoral where do we talk about Things like fairness, citizenship, citizenship and stuff like that. And that's about it. I program most of the time when I get home. And during Fridays, I program into the night. Like, I don't sleep much. Well, for me, my days, like, it goes the same as... My the mornings go, go, my mornings go the same as so seniors' mornings. I go to class go to school, lunch, all that. And when I get home, I I think I wait for, I wait to watch Bloomberg West first. Then I, then I, I, I look at what he's doing. I said, I said, I give my opinion. I write down some ideas. Um, uh, and sometimes maybe like on the Friday night, I join him in coding. Through the night, like, you don't sleep that night, just go. What is your favorite programming language? I will say JavaScript. For me, it's Ruby. Uh, why do you like Ruby the most? Because, uh, I think it's the simplest to, it's the simplest, it's very easy. I, I can just, I don't have to really think, I just start on, I just start with Ruby, just go on. But it's not, uh... And it's very useful. It's very useful for like what we're planning to do in the future. And uh, Osine, with with JavaScript, um, you know, it's it's interesting because JavaScript has gone from this language that people used to not like as much. People used to make fun of, but now it seems like this really feature rich, interesting language um, with all these features. Like I I, I prefer. I, I mean, I like JavaScript and Ruby both. I really like the functional features of both of them. Um, but what do you like about JavaScript so much? I like the fact that JavaScript is diversified. You can use to do a lot of things like animation in games, in websites. The um, animation, the web, like the animation in websites, the inter- the interactiveness of the websites, and JavaScript can be used in different places. React GS Facebook. Oh, you like React? Yes. What do you What do you like about React? I like the fact that it's easy to use and simple, and it's an out cross platform. Yeah, I mean, I think another thing that's cool about JavaScript is uh, how just how big the the import, like all the libraries that you have access to, and you, and it's very easy to import stuff because it's just you're importing it just from the web page. Yeah. What is your uh, What is your favorite Wikipedia article, starting with Anessi. Uh, my favorite Wikipedia article, I think, I just read that today, it's computer vision. What do you like about computer vision? Uh, it's like, I see it as interlinked with 
artificial intelligence uh, and to me that's that's what I really want to go into like that's that's the future to me in my opinion Osine what do you what do you like to read on Wikipedia what's your favorite article machine learning uh, so what what are your favorite sections of that like what's your uh, what's your favorite aspect of machine learning like Nick Delusio's summarization techniques I love I like to read about the summarization aspects and I love to do something like that in the near future. Yeah, I also like machine learning. I love the prospects of like actually teaching the computer to do something. Even though it's a really long and arduous process. Yeah, how would you describe the the training process for how you train a machine to do something? Wow. It's long frustrating when it doesn't get it right but i'm used to things frustrating me so i was trying to teach the computer to compress data have you watched hbo silicon valley oh yes oh yeah absolutely yeah you were trying uh, you were trying to you were trying to be the next pied piper <laughs> yeah something like that so when you're trying to comp- to build a machine learning algorithm for compression are you training are you training your your machine learning algorithm to detect commonly occurring patterns so that you can compress them, or what was your strategy? Yeah, yes, that's what we do. We mostly do it for passages, not applications at the moment, because we haven't gotten the passages one like articles perfectly yet. What do you so passages? What do you mean by that? So you're saying you're you're running these on like news articles and trying to detect commonly occurring patterns in the articles? Yes. Fascinating. Are you are you looking at like the syntax level or like just the uh, repetition of characters or what exactly? Well, what first you get to summarize passages and articles like a human will. So we'll probably get some comp- some summaries done. And compare with the ones that the computer produced. What is your favorite YouTube video? I think my favorite YouTube video is the one when John Cheng sat down with Emmy Chang to talk about the BlackBerry Passport. When he, when he was talking about the iPhone 6 bending and he challenged people to bend the passports. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen that. I need to watch it. What about you, Anasi? Uh, mine is Gundam Style. Uh, that's pretty funny. It's <laughs> very different. Honestly, how is virtual reality going to change things? Wow. Virtual reality is, uh, it's, I don't think it's entirely new. It started back in the 80s. Uh, in the future, virtual reality is going to be, it's going to make you feel like, um, it's going to create a full immersive experience for something like Facebook buying Oculus, like, Facebook bought Oculus Rift, I think, two years ago. And I think what they're trying to do with uh, VR is that they're trying to create immersive, ex- Im- rich immersive experiences for. So maybe if, your gra- if, it's, if it's your grandma's birthday and you can't make it there, it's like you're right there through Facebook. Like, it's going to, um, it's going to make communication a lot easier. That's, that's the way I look at it. And Osine... Do you think that we're going to get to a point where virtual reality is so good that people are going to start confusing virtual reality for the real world? Yeah, yes, I do. Does that scare you? Yes, it does. Does it scare you more or excite you more? It's scary. I can't imagine playing a virtual reality horror or action game. Yeah, it sounds traumatic. When I was younger... Just playing a PlayStation 2, I used to get immersed, so immersed with the game that I was having dreams about how to pass a particular level. Yeah, definitely. What's your favorite video game? My favorite for RPG is Final Fantasy. I used to play Pokemon a lot when I was younger. My favorite for action um, is probably Call of Duty. My favorite for sports is obviously FIFA. Even though PS has better graphics. My favorite for simulation is Football Manager. It's like a cross-breed, cross-breed between sports and simulation. Honestly, do you think that video games and movies are going to merge in the future? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Um, 
for wait, video games and movies going to merge. I haven't really thought about that, but now that you now that you're saying that, uh, I think I think that they'll like they're going to become closer and um, yeah, I actually think they're going to merge. Osine, do you think that software engineering is more of an art or more of a science? I think it's more of an art because it allows you ex- express yourself in the way you feel is best. Your application represents you. And Anasi, what do you think about that? I think it's more of a science because uh, there's a lot of logical things, like you need a lot of technical skills and, um, and you have to be really logical so like you delve into something like software engineering. I think that like UI design is like that's obviously an art, but software design is it's, it's purely science. Like it's engineering, it's science. Interesting. Do you guys listen to podcasts? Yes, we do. What are your favorite podcasts? A sixteen, yeah. Oh, A sixteen Z. I love that show. Do you think that uh, that poverty is going to be eradicated with technological means in the next fifteen or twenty years? Yes, I do, because the more new, with newer technologies coming up, there will be more job opportunities. And with robots, if they aren't given too much emotion and stuff like that, can can give people hope, can help people get out of poverty. I actually think Kusina is right. Like, look at something like Uber. It's created. It has like two thousand employees and over two hundred sixty thousand contractors. Like. Uber, Uber creates jobs for people. Like it's um, the way I see it is like an employment agency. I don't know how that's how correct I am, but more um, more businesses with that type of model are going to come up, and that creates jobs, and with that poverty is reduced. Like absolute poverty is reduced. Honestly, what do you think about the theory that automation will take away so many jobs and people won't have anything to do? Well, there are some people who, who need to learn how to program the automated machines. What do you think, Osine? Manual labor can never t- be truly replaced because, like teachers, there will always be need for teachers. A robot can never replace a teacher. Why not? A robot will think everything must be perfect, no matter how much emotion you add to a robot. But it's nothing like a teacher who has real heart and feelings teaching you, who understands you. So you don't believe that emotion and feelings are things that we can teach robots? No. Okay, interesting. Well, uh, it's been an hour. Uh, it flew by. I love talking to you guys. Anessi and, and Osine Ikianosime. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Wooden Computer. I really hope to, to, uh, to meet you guys at some point in the future. Um, do you, when are your... Do you have any plans to visit the United States anytime soon? No, no nothing. No, 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 not right now. Okay. Well, uh, well, I really, I wish you guys the best, and uh, I can't wait to see what products you guys build in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, you guys have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay. All right. I'll see you. Goodbye. Bye.